Hi, everyone. I'm Ryan Lathan with Fort Worth Opera, and I'm here with Ilmar Gavilan of the internationally acclaimed Harlem Quartet, part of the amazing musical ensemble with pianist Aldo Gavilan, his brother, for our wonderful world premiere Zoom opera, Bernadette's Cozy Book Nook. How are you? Phenomenal. Thanks for having me. I'm so thrilled to be speaking with you. You're so welcome. Thank you. What I, you know, I, I realized the other day that I first heard all of you, and it was, I think it was the, the last track of Chick Corea and Gary Burden's Hot House record. I think it was, was it Mozart Goes Dancing? Yes, we love yeah. that piece. Yeah, that, uh, it, phenomenal. And I guess that was, that was 2012, is that correct? I believe so, okay. yes. You all were founded though in uh, 2016, correct? Yes, correct. Yes. Okay. No, so no, no. I'm sorry. You... you you meant to say 2006. Dude, what did I say? 2016. I think you said that. Yeah. I'm not <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah. This pandemic, being in my looking in my kitchen all the time, my kitchen office. It's kind of my brain is a little like porridge. So I get you. Anyway, but it's, it's so 2006. 2006. But how how did you all uh, how did you all get together to form the quartet? Well, you know, we actually were put together. Like, uh, like, you know, like matchmaking. <laughs> so the original four members uh, won the Sphinx competition. Um, if you're not familiar, it's a competition that likes to um, uh, promote minority string players, specifically African-American and Latino players. They're, they're, uh, they're other, uh, um, you know, types of uh, players that are welcome, but I think, you know, basically these two big uh, underrepresented uh, uh, players are, are like showcase. And uh, so the competition uh, organizer thought maybe we would be great to do outreach concerts and uh, bring classical music into Harlem. And even the name was, was given to us. So that's really cool. First year we leave actually in Harlem, two, two of the members really lived there and we had an office and we went to every single school there. And uh, that's how we start playing uh, jazz so that the kids uh, will be a little bit more engaged because it was kind of hard to keep their attention just doing uh, our wonderful standard repertoire that we all love. Um, so we learned the hard way, you know, to, to, keep, to keep them on their toes where, where, where was your office? I lived on 151st and Broadway, in between Broadway and I don't remember the other street, but. That's super cool. Ours was um, a little bit higher up in, um, in 138th and 5th Avenue. Oh, okay. But it was remodeled and it was beautiful. It was um, around the time where Clinton opened an office and, and Harlem became a little bit more trendy and uh, a lot of people invested there and remodel stuff. So we, you know, we like to always think of, um, not, not to think highly of ourselves, but to be part of a, a renaissance, uh, yeah. uh, a, a second renaissance in Harlem where, you know, more cultural things start happening and, and investments and this and that. So, uh, but what's really beautiful is that we start playing uh, jazz in order to to um, relate to the kids, and mm -hmm. that altruistic per se thing is actually what created our niche as a quartet. And now every presenter expects us to do some of the some of the program at least um, to be American or or jazz influence. And uh, somehow that's how we got our hands to Chi Korea String Quartet. And uh, we were able to play for him and he really liked it and start calling us. And it culminated with the album that you described. Uh, and we actually got a Grammy for that particular yeah. album. So it's, it's just great how it goes around. All we wanted to do is to be a little cooler for the kids. And we ended up having one of our most important uh, <laughs> ingredients as a career, being able to to uh, to play some jazz too. How so for Bernadette's cozy book nook? How did this project come about for you all? And what was the process like, rehearsing and putting this whole virtual production together? 
Well, we we're very lucky to work with Joe Illich in the past. Uh, in fact, we worked with him so long ago at a New Year's Eve concert. Uh, and uh, back in back in Santa Fe. Yes. 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 And I actually don't want to say the exact date, but I know it's a long time ago. And it was so much fun. We we hit it off. We had great chemistry, the quartet and, and Joe. He's the so, best. Exactly. So I think uh, locally for us, he remembered that chemistry and reached out to us. Say, hey, I'm doing this. And um, I know that if he's involved, it would be great. Um, I have uh, I had a little bit of... Uh, obviously questions like how is this going to work virtually mm -hmm. but the writing was very very um self-explanatory and the process was very well organized um we had a fabulous engineer very good group i mean um i i think i just said the harlan quartet is a very good group but <laughs> <laughs> What I meant to say, you are. That, <laughs> you are. I, mean, I, I wouldn't want to do something like this with strangers or people that are not very familiar with, with each other, uh, with, with each other's playing and also with each other. Um, it goes with us saying we, we were in a, in a studio for like, I don't know, eight hours with masks. And, uh, and uh, you know, it's not ideal. But uh, having you know the you know the audio here and everything we had to do, and the music is is very um, I don't know I don't know if the word accessible is correct, but I re it's very relatable. It's, the, very the, relatable. it's actually the exact word that I was thinking of after I watched it. Okay, accessible. So, it really is, but in the so, best possible way. Like it's it's really well crafted, but it's it's also. I, I, I left humming melodies and uh, it's, it's, easy to, it's easy to step into that musical world. It's, it's not esoteric, you know what I mean? It's, it's yes. very relatable. And the actual writing for us for strings also, it's uh, something that we're familiar with. It's not uh, the, the, the most, you know, out there thing we had to do with sound like an iguana. And I like that. <laughs> I like that. Um, yeah, yeah, we had like a, a marking, a glisse, like an iguana. And then we had a little like, you know, a little clarification, what, what does an iguana sounds like? <laughs> and, uh, and after we uh, got to our a conclusion, then, you know, we pass it around because they wanna, you know, a few of the players had it at different places. So that's the, that's the, the most out there thing we had. And it, it's great because the, you know, that was fun and um, everything lay really well for the instruments. You know, th this is something I've been curious about. So you all work so closely together, you know, o over, the, over the years. So how has it been for this ensemble during the pandemic? Have, how have you like synced your lives so that you can still continue to make music together? You know, it's been really hard. Uh, we, I mean, most of, the live concerts got actually uh, not canceled, postponed, which is great. I would say maybe maybe twenty percent were actually canceled for good, but a vast majority is waiting somewhere there in the in the cloud. So when it finally rains, it's gonna rain good. <laughs> <laughs> Meantime, uh, we've been occupied doing um, recordings like such as this and um, teaching. Uh, a lot of um, concerts had a teaching component to it since outreach is a big part of Harlem Quartet. And we were able to save a lot of uh, teaching component, a, a lot of uh, engagements that also included teaching and, and these type of things. So in types of employment, we're still eating, but in, type, in terms, <laughs> yeah, hallelujah. But in terms of uh, you know interacting with each other and making music life is very few. We did a couple and it felt really weird being at the airport. Everything what we you know everything that we are used to doing, but with masks, this and that, and not able to hang out and really, not once we could shake hands or 
or hog or something. It, it was really wild, really but we still enjoyed it. It was very enjoyable. Yeah. How, do, how do you all practice during <laughs> this? I mean, we, uh, we are not practicing in person unless we have a very rare uh, tour, which we did. And now in, in February, we have another engagement. Uh, we simply work uh -oh, what we had to do. When we did the recording, we met, of course. Uh, Bert, I mean, this project we, we met in person at the studio, but our routine is disrupted. We are not meeting regularly in person. No. Yeah. yeah. You can't. I mean, really, yeah, you all have to look out for one another. So you and your you and your brother have a, a documentary film that has been making the circuit. Can you tell That's us right. about that? Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. Uh, this this been uh, in the making for like four or five years. Uh, actually, more, more, because one of the scenes is when Trump actually <laughs> uh, got in and I, I, it showed me being in disbelief. Now, there is no way, there is no way. And anyway, so that shows that at least we finished that uh, four years ago, at least. And we've been waiting, 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 and they finally released it uh, virtually. And now it's just doing the circuits in, uh, in festivals. And uh, I'm super excited. A lot, of, uh, a lot of musicians' friends have reached out to both my brother and I, and uh, we're really, really excited. And, um, and we hope that that documentary is more than, you know, two, two guys. I, I hope it just, you know, helps uh, musicians in general and families and, uh, you know, also bring up the, the topic of Cuba-US relationship and what it actually does. It's not just something in a, in a you know, history book, the missile crisis, this and that. It's actually something, believe it or not, we're still dealing with that, you know, musicians like my brother and I cannot play together because something that happened who knows when. And <laughs> so it's great that this movie uh, brings up to the attention that uh, it really disrupts culture in both countries and families. And uh, it's, uh, it's a very personal, very, very personal movie. When, when will um, when we'll be, be able to see it again? You know, the producers always uh, announce on Facebook like different, different venues, mm -hmm. like festivals. Uh, but um, I think PBS, will release it at some point. Uh, so you don't need to be part of a festival or something like that, or have a date or an, a, you know, a private Zoom link. <laughs> uh, that, that should happen, I think, in the spring. But meantime, uh, I see that uh, the producers, usually they tag me and I see uh, they're, they're doing great. You already have uh, half an award, Woodstock. Woodstock, best documentary. And that was super cool, by the way. I never been in an outdoor movie theater in a parking lot, mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. the 50s. I, I, I never been there and that was the premiere. I was super excited. It's really beautiful up there too. I, I did some, oh, it's a million years ago, I did some really avant-garde opera <laughs> for some little tiny festival, uh, Mount Tremper, uh, but wonderful, wonderful festival. And I think it's still going. Um, but um, the uh, just beautiful being out there in you know outdoors and uh, making art so close to nature. So yes, phenomenal. It was very cold, but we enjoyed it a lot. Yeah. When when what what time of year? <laughs> Actually, it was in the summer. I don't know why that night was so cold. We had like <laughs> covers. I mean, it wasn't cold like now, cold, but right. For some reason, uh, everybody was, and I had to play uh, a little outdoor, you know, people really wanted me to, to play a little bit. And I was really cold. Even though I, I, I brought my second violin, uh, I was afraid for the violin. I'm like, whoa. <laughs> it was a great, great experience though. Yeah. So I, I, how, how did you and your brother and the quartet sync? How did you all come together? This is just a marvel of technology. I, I, I mean, I was in disbelief, but um, Aldo had to actually 
follow the singers in some of the passages. All of this recitativo stuff that there is no way to put it in with the click. You have to follow them. He had to follow them by ear. And then we had to follow alto. That was the order in, in, some, of the, in some of the free parts. And uh, it's just phenomenal. He had the, he had the hard <laughs> part because he was the, the first to go. Once he goes following the singers, it's like having a conductor going pa in the words. You know, you have to catch exactly what you want. Once he had that, then we're able to follow the piano in the track. And uh, sometimes we had to make a decision like in real opera, which means the orchestra stays together, even if the singers uh, deviate a little bit on purpose for, for, for the spontaneity that is required in the delivery. You don't want singers to be completely locked in. It doesn't sound like a speech yeah. rhythm, right? So we had to make some decisions like that and go with Aldo. He was our conductor once he was there first. And then I don't even want to be in the shoes of the editors. Bravo to these people. Oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> we have to sync everything. Oh my goodness. So it bravo. really was bravo. a marvel of technology and then the organic process of doing this as you normally would. Like just I blows my mind. Blows my mind. Bravi tutti. <laughs> Well, this was such an honor. Thank you so much for chatting with me. I really, 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 really of appreciate course. it. Of course. Thanks for, for, for having me. My pleasure. You bet. You bet. Don't miss your chance to hear the phenomenal Harlem Quartet and Ilmar in Bernadette's Cozy Book Nook, now through January 24th through the FWO Green Room. Visit fwopera.org to get your tickets today. Thanks again, Ilmar. Thank you. Bye now.